Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking all about the new aquatic update for Minecraft. I am going to be reading a lot of the new things that have been added to the game, as well as changes that have just been made overall. While I read, you will be seeing me swimming around in the oceans and experiencing this update for the first time in creative mode. So, let's start. The first thing we'll talk about are all of the new blocks that have been added to the game. I will list them off in alphabetical order explain each one as we go. The first of the new blocks is air variants. There are two variants, there's cave air and void air. Both have the exact same properties as air. Cave air is generated in caves, while void air is used internally for blocks above and below the world and in unbloated chunks. The next is blue ice. It generates in icebergs, is more slippery than ice, and packed ice, and can be crafted using nine packed ice. Next is bubble columns. It is created by magma blocks, or soul sand and water at least two blocks deep. Magma block columns pull entities down. They will stop items from floating up in water and sink boats. Soul sand columns push entities up. Buttons, pressure plates, and drop doors now have separate textures for all six types of wood. The next is carved pumpkin. They are now a new block that has the old pumpkin texture. Normal pumpkin blocks no longer have a face. Right clicking a pumpkin block with shears will turn it into a carved pumpkin and make it spit out four pumpkin seeds. The next one is a conduit. It is crafted using one heart of the sea and eight nautilus shells. It can be activated by placing prismarine, dark prismarine, prismarine bricks, and or sea lanterns in five by five open squares around it. When active, will affect nearby players in water with the conduit power status effect. Conduit power stops the breath meter from running out, gives underwater night vision, and increases mining speed. A complete structure will fully power the conduit. When active at full power, the range will increase and hostile mobs within eight blocks will take damage the eye of the conduit will show whether it's hunting for hostile mobs or not. It will show an open eye when it's looking out for hostile mobs, and a closed eye otherwise. It emits a strong glow at light level 15. The next is Coral. It comes in five different variants, each with a different type. Tube for blue, brain for pink, bubble for purple, fire for red, and horn for yellow. It can only be placed underwater. It naturally generates in coral reefs and can only be obtained with a tool enchanted with silk touch. 
the next is Coral Block. It comes in the same five variants as Coral. It must be mined with a silk touch tool in order to drop itself, otherwise they drop a dead Coral Block. Each variant has a dead or gray counterpart. Turns into a dead Coral Block if none of the six sides are touching water, although not instantly. Like coral, it naturally generates in coral reefs. Coral fans come in the same five variants as coral. It can be placed underwater on the sides and tops of blocks. It can be placed in air will turn into dead coral fans after a short moment if this is the case. Naturally generates on the sides of coral blocks and coral reefs. Can only be obtained with a tool enchanted with silk touch. Dead coral blocks. It comes in the same five variants as coral. Tube, brain, bubble, fire, and horn obtained when mining a coral block without a silk touch tool, or when none of the six sides of a coral block are touching the water, it cannot be turned back into coral. The dead coral fans come in the same five variants as coral, generate in coral reef structures, and can only be obtained with a tool enchanted with silk touch. Then we have dried kelp block. It smelts 20 items when used as fuel in a furnace. It's crafted from dried kelp and can also be crafted back into dried kelp. Then we have actual kelp. It can only be placed underwater, requiring at least one water block above it. It can be placed on dry land by using the set block command. It generates in ocean biomes, except warm oceans. It can grow multiple blocks high and has animated textures. It can be smelt into dry kelp. The next new blocks are prismarine shards and slabs. Both come in all three variants. Prismarine, Dark prismarine and prismarine bricks. Stairs can be crafted with six of their respective material. The slabs can be crafted with three of their respective material. And then we have seagrass. Like kelp, seagrass also comes in a tall variant has animated textures and generates in oceans, including underwater caves, rivers, and swamplands. Can additionally be generated when using bone meal on any block underwater. Drops from turtles when killed. And sea pickles. They generate in warm oceans, especially around coral reefs. Up to four of them can be placed on a block. Each one adds three to the light level, but only when placed underwater. It can be smelt into lime dye. And with the shulker boxes, we have the added a non-dyed version of a shulker box. Then we have stripped logs. It's a barkless variant of logs. It's created by using an axe on a log block. Axe is a regular lock and can still be used to craft planks. And then the last for this subject are turtle eggs. They're created by breeding turtles. Stepping on turtle eggs will break them. Zombies, zombie pigment, and drowned will intentionally step on turtle eggs. After a while, they will become slightly cracked and then very cracked. Very cracked turtle eggs will eventually hatch into baby turtles. 
Now the next subject we'll be talking about are all the items that have been added. The first is Arrow of Slow Falling. This gives the player the slow falling status effect. And then Arrow of the Turtle Master. Functions the same as the Potion of the Turtle Master. Then we have Buried Treasure Exploration Map. They're found in underwater ruined chests. Leads the player to buried treasure. We have a debug stick. It's a technical item used to cycle between different block states. Left clicking cycles through states. Right clicking through values. Shift clicking will cycle through the states or values in reverse order. And then dried kelp. It's obtained from smelting kelp. It can be eaten, restoring one hunger point, and can also be crafted into dried kelp blocks. And then next, we have a bucket of fish. It comes in four variants. Cod, salmon, puffer fish, and tropical fish bucket obtained by using a water bucket on a fish mob. When used, it will place a water source block and spawn the corresponding fish inside it. Then we have Heart of the Sea. It's used to craft conduits. They generate and buried treasure chests in stacks of one. Then we have Kelp. It can be used to place a kelp plant underwater. It can be dried in a furnace to create dried kelp. We have mushroom blocks. They now appear in the creative inventory. Also, mushroom stems have an item form and appear in the creative inventory. And then we have nautilus shells that are used to craft conduits. They can be obtained by fishing and drowned can spawn holding a nautilus shell. Petrified oak slab now has a model. It's uh, the old wood slab that acts like a stone slab. And then another item that we have now is phantom membrane. It's dropped by phantoms. Um, it's used to repair an elytra and can be brewed into potions of slow falling. Now, the potion of slow falling is brewed with the phantom membrane and gives the player the slow falling status effect for a minute and 30 seconds. It prevents all fall damage. And it makes the player fall slower, prevents the player from trampling crops even when jumping on top of them. And brewing it with redstone dust will extend the effect duration to four minutes. Like all potions, it can be turned into splash potion and lingering potion using gunpowder and dragon's breath. Now the potion of the turtle master will give you slowness four and resistance three for one minute. Throwing it with glowstone dust will enhance the effects to slowness 6 and resistance 4. Like all potions, it can be turned into splash potion and lingering potion using gunpowder and dragon's breath. The new item is also called uh, scoots, which are dropped by baby turtles growing up and can be used to craft turtle shells. We also have smooth quartz, smooth red sandstone, smooth sandstone, and smooth stone. Like bark, they now have an item form which appears in the creative inventory. We have spawn eggs. There are eight new spawn eggs. The drowned, phantom, dolphin, turtle, cod, Salmon, pufferfish, and tropical fish. 
Another new item is the trident. It's a new weapon and can be thrown by using it or be used as a melee weapon by attacking, dealing 9 damage. It's obtainable by killing a drowned. And the next we have turtle shells. They're crafted from scoots and can be used as a helmet, adding 2 armor points. While equipped and out of water, it will give the player the water breathing effect for 10 seconds. Essentially giving the player 10 extra seconds of breathing water. And it can be used to brew the potion of the turtle master or an awkward potion. And then the last one is for the items list is wood. We now have an item form and appear in the creative inventory. Uh, this is true for all six types, and they can now be crafted for logs and a square yield three wood. And they now follow identical placement rules to logs and to other such blocks. So those were all the items. And now I'm going to talk about the new mobs that have been added first one is dolphins. Uh, they spawn in any ocean that isn't frozen. Uh, they're neutral mobs, and like wolves and zombie pigmen, dolphins will attack in a group if one is angered. They can be fed using raw cod, but they don't breed. Uh, they drop cod on death. They play with nearby items by picking them up and dropping them after a very short moment, and occasionally jump out of the water like real-life dolphins. They can also jump between disconnected bodies of water. They chase after boats and jump over water surfaces. They suffocate after spending too much time on land, and if they start drowning, they will swim to the surface. They give the player the dolphin's grace status effect when the player swims near them. And they can help players find buried treasure, and when they are fed raw cod, they will swim to the nearest shipwreck or underwater ruins. The next one is the drowned. They spawn in the oceans and rivers, as well as in swamps and underwater ruins. Zombies will morph into drowned after a while if they are in water. Drowned can spawn with tridents and nautilus shells, allowing you to get them in survival. They do not float, but can swim, although they prefer to walk. All drowned have a melee attack, and ones with tridents have a ranged attack. Like zombies, drowned will attack baby turtles and stomp on and destroy turtle eggs. The next mobs are the different fish mobs. First is cod. They spawn in cold, normal, and lukewarm ocean biomes, and they form in groups of up to nine and salmon. They spawn in frozen ocean, cold ocean, and river biomes. They form up in groups of six. Bufferfish. They spawn in lukewarm and warm ocean biomes, inflate themselves when a player gets near, and will cause seven seconds of poison to nearby players. And then tropical fish. They spawn in lukewarm and warm ocean biomes. They come in 14 different colors and patterns. They drop themselves when killed. Outside of water, they flop around before suffocating. They will slowly flop towards a water source. They can be caught with a water bucket. And then the next mobs are fantastic. They spawn in the overworld at high altitudes. 
and swoops down in groups of around three or four to attack players that have not slept in a while. The player must be above sea level. They are considered to be undead mobs. Uh, this means that they are harmed by healing potions and then healed by harming potions. They're ignored by the wither and affected by the smite enchantment. They will burn when exposed to sunlight. And then they drop about anywhere from 0 to 1 phantom membrane. And then the last of the new mobs are the turtles. Water mobs. They are, they are water mobs which make nests comprised of eggs on shorelines throughout various biomes. They have a baby variant, which hatch from the eggs and move into the water when born. They can be bred using seagrass, and they spawn on warm beaches in small groups. They lay eggs on their home beach, and they drop anywhere from 0 to 2 seagrass upon top. Drop zero to one bull when killed with a trident enchanted with channeling. And you can craft uh, scoots into a bigger turtle shell. Then the next subject we'll talk about are the biomes that have changed or have been added. The first one that's been changed is the end. There have now been added small end islands, end midlands, and end highlands. There's also um, end barrens. All four generate in different parts of the outer islands of the end, which previously just used the end biome. Now with the ocean, we now have warm oceans, lukewarm oceans, cold oceans, deep warm oceans, Deep lukewarm oceans and deep cold oceans, and the last one being deep frozen oceans. The frozen ocean now generates again. Then we have the something new called the buffet world types that can be created by selecting buffet world as a world type in the starting menu. It creates single biome worlds. It allows choosing between overworld, such as the surface, the nether as caves, and end as floating islands. Terrain Generation Biome names are sorted alphabetically in the buffet menu. And then next we have Buried Treasure. It's a new structure that consists of a buried chest with loot in it. It has its own buried treasure loot table. Maps found in underwater ruins can lead you to them. The next biome is coral reefs. They naturally generate in warm ocean biomes. They are composed of coral, coral blocks, and coral fans. Icebergs also generate on frozen oceans. And then shipwrecks can be found in oceans and beaches. They contain anywhere from one to three loot chests, and they're different types of loot depending on the ship. They can generate upright, sideways, or upside down. And then underwater caves. They come in many variants, including ravines. Underwater ravines will often contain magma blocks at the bottom, which will create bubble columns. And then the last of the biomes is the underwater ruins. They come in many different shapes and sizes. The cold ruins can be found in cold and frozen ocean biomes, regardless of depth. Warm ruins can be found in warm, lukewarm, and deep lukewarm ocean biomes. They can generate alone or as part of a big ruined village. They can also generate out of the water, slightly underground or slightly above sea level. 
And then the last subject that I'm going to be talking about today is just the general gameplay. And the first half of that will be all about the enchantments. So the first new enchantment is channeling. It only has one level. It's used on tridents to summon a lightning bolt on impact with a mob during storms. It requires the target mob to be directly under an open sky and in a biome where it's raining. Next is Impaling. It goes up to level 5 and is used on tridents to deal more damage to sea creatures. Loyalty. It goes up to level 3. It's used on tridents to make it return when thrown. And then we have Riptide. It goes up to level 3 but it is not compatible with loyalty or channeling. It's used on tridents to launch the player when thrown while in water or rain. Riptide will not throw the trident, but instead launch you forwards. If the player is not in water and it's not raining, the player is not able to throw tridents enchanted with Riptide, but they can still deal melee damage. Players display a spinning animation when dashing. Next is map markers. It's an added the ability to put markers on maps. You use on a banner with a map to add it to the map. You right click on the same banner again to remove it. The map will show the base color of the banner at that spot. Named banners will also show their name on the map. If a banner is destroyed, it will disappear when you get close or while holding the map. It uses the new banners in BT for maps. And the last one is movement. When sprinting while in water, the player will now swim on the surface much faster than walking and running in water before. Pressing shift causes the player to rapidly dive down. Sprinting on the surface of water doesn't make you swim, instead you stay at the same altitude constantly. The player's hitbox is only as large as 0.6 by 0.6 blocks, same as flying with the Elytra while swimming. Vertically and horizontally, the player can fit through a one block gap. And then the last thing I'm going to be talking about in this video are the status effects. There's three different ones. The first one is the conduit power. It gives the player unlimited water breathing. It gives the player underwater night vision effect and gives the player a haste effect, allowing them to mine faster underwater. The second one is dolphin's grace, which makes the player swim faster and it's acquired by swimming near dolphins. And then the last one is slow falling. This causes the player to descend at a much slower rate and not take any damage when hitting the ground. And this allows the player to jump further than normal. And if the player is sprinting while under the slow falling status effect, they will be able to jump across a gap of over five and a half blocks compared to four with normal sprinting. Crops will not get destroyed if the player lands on them with the slow falling status effect. Higher levels do not change the rate of descent. There are a lot of other things that were changed and included in this update. But that is pretty much the gist of it. And for now, I'll end this video here. I hope you found it relaxing and enjoyed listening about this new update in Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.